Hello my audio file friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today I'm going to be taking a look inside on full ca I mean SVS's brand new Ultra Evolution bookshelf speaker. In my look inside videos we go over the cabinet construction, the TS parameters of the drivers, and then we take a look at the crossover. So let's get started. Before I get started with this teardown, I just wanted to let the viewers know that I purchased these speakers with my own money. SVS did not send me these speakers or pay me to do this video in any way. In fact, I doubt SVS even knows who I am because my channel is too small to matter. I primarily make these videos because as a consumer, I think it's important to know about the cabinet construction, crossover components, and quality of the drivers in a speaker before laying down your hard-earned money on them. In my opinion, I think my look inside videos will better inform consumers about the speakers that they are interested in than any subjective review could ever do. So without further ado, let's get started with the teardown. So now I'm going to remove the mid-range driver and it's held in by six 3mm Allen screws. I'm speculating here, but I'm about 90% sure that this mid-range driver is made by Peerless. Peerless is a well-established speaker manufacturer that has been in business since 1926. The mid-range driver from the Ultra Evolution bookshelf features a cast aluminum basket and a decent sized ferrite magnet. SVS is also using a couple of design techniques to keep the voice coil cool during those long and loud listening sessions. The first one is, is they are venting the voice coil underneath the spider, and the second is by utilizing a vented bobbin, which also aids in cooling. This driver also features a beetle rubber surround and a comb material that is made from glass fibers. SVS is venting the trapped air behind the dust cap by using a vented cone coupler instead of a vented pole piece. The speaker features an overhung voice coil design, which is the most popular design currently used in speakers today. Overhung voice coils provide better efficiency than underhung voice coil designs. Overall, a very nice mid-range driver that has some really impressive bass and detail for a speaker in this price category. I will talk more about how the speaker sounds in my review video. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. It came in at 3 pounds and 10.2 ounces. Here are the TS parameters of the mid-range driver that I measured using my Dayton Audio DATS V3 tool. The mid-range driver is pretty nice and also well damped. This driver has a resonant frequency of 46 Hz and I was impressed by the bass output from these speakers considering the driver is only 6.5 inches in size. Total Q came in at 0.34 and voice coil inductance is pretty low at 0.227 millihenries. You don't want high inductance in your voice coil because it can be a major source of harmonic distortion, plus cause the driver to have slower transient response. During my impedance sweep, I did see a small resonance at around 425 Hz. Now I'm going to remove the tweeter. It's held in by four 3mm Allen screws. The tweeter in the new Ultra Evolution series is pretty cool and contains quite a bit of science and engineering behind it. It features a 1 inch aluminum dome that has a coating made from diamond carbon. I think the intent behind this coating is to improve the rigidity of the tweeter dome. By a process called vapor deposition, SVS is able to add this coating to their aluminum tweeters. This process might sound familiar to you if you're a Bowers & Wilkins fan. B&W uses a process of vapor deposition in their 800 series loudspeakers which use synthetically grown diamond domes in their tweeter assemblies. 
According to SVS, vapor deposition allows for a layer of diamond carbon to grow on the surface of the tweeter, which in turn improves the tweeter's response and breakup frequency. I know it sounds like fancy marketing speak, but from what I can hear, these are some of the smoothest and most detailed sounding tweeters I have heard from a bookshelf in this price range. The tweeter has a faceplate made from metal and not plastic, which is also nice to see. The motor structure on the tweeter has a pretty decent sized ferrite magnet plus an additional bucking magnet. I'm speculating here, but I'm guessing they are using the bucking magnet to improve the sensitivity of the tweeter. The science and engineering doesn't stop there either. Even the grill on the front of the tweeter, which I think most people, including me, will think is there to protect the tweeter dome from curious fingers, but it's actually there to serve a more important purpose. SVS calls the grill organic cell lattice diffuser. I know, that's one heck of a fancy buzzword. According to SVS, the tweeter diffuser is there to improve the response curve of the tweeter by making it as flat as possible. I'm not even going to try and explain how it works because it's way above my head. But if you're curious, I would recommend that you watch the video on YouTube where some of SVS's engineers talk about the design methodology that went into designing this diffuser. I'll leave a link to their video in the description. Now let's see how much this tweeter weighs. The tweeter weighs one pound and four and a half ounces. Here are the TS parameters that I measured from the tweeter. The tweeter has a resonant frequency of around 966 hertz. The impedance sweep shows an asymmetric resonant peak with one side having a knee in it that bulges out. Normally this knee in the impedance sweep can be caused by the use of ferrofluid in the tweeter, but I reached out to SVS and they said ferrofluid isn't being used here. I'll leave it up to you, the viewer, to decide what is going on in this impedance sweep. Now let's remove the terminal cob so I can take a look at the binding posts and the connectors to see if there's any ferromagnetic parts being used in the signal path. This terminal cup is held in by four 3mm Allen screws. Here's the terminal cup that I pulled from the Ultra Evolution bookshelf speaker. And uh, I really like these binding posts. They're of nice quality. They turn real easy, you got plenty of room to get your fingers in there to get your speaker cable in there and then tightened up. Um, these uh, connectors actually remind me of the connectors that WBT makes and also the ones that uh, Bowers and Wilkins used to use on their Nautilus series. So let's see if there's any ferromagnetic materials being used. And nope, so we're all good there. Check the back. Oh, okay. So the the nuts here that fasten the binding post to the terminal cup, they are made from steel. You can easily replace those with ones made from brass. And I'll leave a link in the description to the brass nuts that I'm going to be using to replace the steel ones with. It appears SVS is using a second order filter on the Ultra Evolution bookshelf speaker. For the tweeter circuit, SVS is using a generic 10.8 microfarad metallized polyester film capacitor with a 5% tolerance, plus an air core inductor. For the woofer circuit, they are using an 8 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and an iron core inductor. I didn't trace out the circuit, so I'm speculating that these are where SVS is using these components for each driver. The crossover seems to be decently laid out, and the placement of the inductors shouldn't cause any inductive coupling. Wow, the cabinet from the SVS Ultra Evolution bookshelf is as quiet as a church. SVS has taken the time to develop an extremely rigid cabinet for this speaker. During my impedance sweep, I did not see any spikes in the response that would indicate any audible cabinet resonances are taking place. This is a very quiet cabinet that is obviously well constructed. The front baffle on the cabinet is one inch thick, and the side and rear walls are three quarters of an inch thick. On the inside of the cabinet, I noticed there is a black coating that has been applied to all of the walls. I think this black coating may be a treatment that SVS has applied for damping purposes, because it feels extremely stiff and solid to the touch. There is also plenty of foam material lined throughout the cabinet to help absorb any standing waves. 
On my bench, port tuning came in at 49 hertz. The port is 2 inches wide and is about 5 inches in length. I think it's pretty cool that SVS is using buzzwords like time alignment at this price point because normally you don't see these types of design techniques being incorporated unless you're spending much more money. So what is time alignment? Basically it means the sounds being produced from the woofer and tweeter arrive at the listener's ear at the same time. I'm a bit skeptical of the time alignment claim though. The drivers may be time aligned on the front baffle, but are they doing the same with the crossover? I'm not a speaker designer by any means. I'm just a crazy obsessed audiophile that knows enough to get himself in trouble. So take what I vomit next with a grain of salt. Basically, I'm thinking out loud here. Since SVS is using a second order slope in these speakers, that will also cause delays and phase shifts in the alignment. Then there is also the inductance of each driver which can also cause acoustic delays as well. So are these speakers truly time aligned as they claim? Chris, who's an engineer over at PS Audio, does an excellent video on this subject, which I'll leave a link in the description to if you're interested in learning more. Don't get me wrong, I'm truly impressed with the Ultra Evolution speakers, so much so that I made a permanent home for them in my bedroom system. But I also think we as enthusiasts should be asking questions like this to try and better understand the concept behind a manufacturer's claim. Perhaps I'm completely wrong here, and someone in the comments will set the record straight, but I think these are valid questions to be asked. And that's my look inside video on the SVS Ultra Evolution bookshelf speakers. Hopefully, this video will give you an idea of what to expect in terms of cabinet construction, crossover, and driver quality from these speakers. Personally, I'm really impressed with what SVS has been able to accomplish from a set of speakers that only cost $1,200 per pair. These speakers are some of the nicest that I have heard at this price point, and is one of the reasons why I'm making a permanent home for them in my bedroom system. If you're interested in hearing my opinion on how these speakers sound, then check out my review video, which should be out next month. In my review videos, I talk about how the speakers sound in various room sizes, what's included with the speakers, packaging material, and other boring stuff. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure to hit that like button. I treat likes as votes on what videos I should do more of next. So long, and happy listening!